And uh, I have worked with editors and um, cover designers, illustrators, graphic designers, kind of the whole gamut. Um, I So I have two series out. One is a trilogy and one is seven. It's the se se seven something. Sex something. Yeah. <laughs> something. Yeah. Sex something. Anyway, so yeah. So these are some of my covers. Okay. Um, and I'm going to talk to you guys about how I, because I do the concepts for the covers. I have illustrators and I tell them exactly what I want. And I'm going to tell you kind of how I get there, how I find what I want, and the research that I do, because I do hours and hours worth of research to get my covers. And I really believe that my covers are the difference between the fact that I make pretty good money and the authors that have really good books and don't make pretty good money as covers. I mean, there's other factors, obviously. Some of that would be genre. You know, if you write romance and you're really good at it, you're gonna make money. Because we all like kissing. Okay. So, let's go to the next slide. Okay. So, one thing that I really use, this is blurry. Is it blurry for you guys? Do I need to move it forward? Okay, who's, who's my AV people? Because I'm not AV. Okay, so I'll keep going while they're doing this. Um, okay, so one thing, one thing that I use is Pinterest, right? So what I'll do is I have a Pinterest board that I, I pin fantasy covers on because I write high fantasy, I write high fantasy. So I go through and I pin covers of why I have fantasy novels and I look for the elements that they typically use because you are sending messages to your readers with your covers. And the worst thing you can do is send the wrong message because then when they pull up your cover, they think I'm getting X. When they get Y, they leave you bad reviews, right? So you definitely want to make sure that you are um, communicating what your book is about in every aspect of your cover. And some people forget some aspects. Like some, I've seen people have really amazing covers and have terrible graphic design. You all know what graphic design is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and, and that's, that says, okay, self-published book, they didn't put the effort into it, they don't know what they're doing, it's not gonna make this book, okay? It all speaks of quality. You want your covers to say quality and to be an accurate portrayal of what is actually inside this book. Which means you need to know what is inside your book, right? <laughs> And that is a whole other class, which I also teach, but not at this conference. So, anyway, I use Pinterest to keep track of inspirational images. So, if I get, as I'm writing my book, for each trilogy, some people do it per book, for each trilogy or series, I should say, I have a Pinterest board for that series. And I'll go through Pinterest and see images that look like my character, or that look like the hero, or that look like the setting, or that have an interesting pose that I think would look good on the cover or whatever, right? And I pin these images as I'm writing the book. This is all going towards cover creation. I do it as I'm going, right? Um, so, and then it's also, it, it makes it easier if you, um, so with my newsletter, this is from marketing thing. People will be like, okay, what do you do with your newsletter? And like, well, how do you keep talking to people? So I'll say, okay, when I was writing the book, I, had, I was inspired by this image that I saw well, four months later, you're not gonna remember where you found that image. But if I pinned it, I can pull it up, I can send it to my newsletter, and talk to them about this image inspired this setting, right? Sometimes I'll also go through, like I've been working on my Forbidden Forest series. This is the one that's gonna be um, my next series. And um, I'm trying to figure out my, my people live in the trees, right? What do I want that to look like? I've had a couple ideas and I've not liked them. I've written that and written a few chapters and kind of not liked it. So I went on Pinterest and started researching tree houses and you know fantasy trees and things like that to kind of inspire me. So you can also go on DeviantArt. That's another good spot to find stuff. The problem with DeviantArt is like it's kind of, it encompasses everything. So you have a lot of to weed through that's maybe not as high quality as other stuff. So. Um, and then, you know, it's also a good marketing tool, using Pinterest. Um, my readers like to see these kinds of things, and they get excited about my books, and they follow me on Pinterest. Okay, so I use Pinterest for my images. Um, and we also talked a little bit about researching your competition. So what is your main genre? You need to know what your main genre is. You need to know what your subgenres are. Every book has more than one, right? And a really quick trick to learn this is what element can you not draw out of your book 
is if you draw this element out of your book, the whole book falls apart. So for instance, my novels are high fantasy with strong romantic elements. But if I took the romance out of my book, it would still be a book. It would be as good, but it would still be a book. If I took out the high fantasy part of it, the good against evil um, battle uh, against that kind of nebulous whatever, my book falls apart. I no longer have a novel, right? So that's a good hint. Um, so this, so you're gonna go out and check out the competition. These are the books that are selling in your genre. What kinds of things are on those covers? And it's gonna depend very, it's gonna be very different for one genre versus another, right? So um, Goodreads has a good um, tool to use. You can look at best high fantasy covers of 2017. You can pull that up, right? You can go on Amazon and look under the also box. So say my books are similar to Cinder, or um, by that's by Marissa Meyer, or um, a little bit like Gracelink, right? So I look at those covers and think, okay, what kind of elements did they use? Because that's what the audience is used to seeing. So those are clues. It's like connotations for words, right? Every word you use has a connotation. Well, so do the images that we see. They come with meanings already attached to them. You need to kind of have an idea of what your meanings are. So um, another good way is on Amazon, you go on the drop down on the search and choose books. So on your little search menu, you choose the drop down, you can choose Kindle books, which is what I would do. And then you can start refining by genre as well. So on the left side, it'll say eBooks and um, Kindle Prime and adult fiction. And you start clicking on those and start clicking down to as far down as you can go. So for instance, a category is fairy tales and folklore um, adaptations, right? And that is underneath um, young adult fantasy, also um, folk fairy tales, and then adaptions. So I've gone down probably six levels to get to there, right? Now I have a very specific list, and those are the ones that are selling, because Amazon breaks them by the ones that are selling the most, right? You want your cover to be a sister cover to those covers. You don't want to copy them necessarily, but you want to look like they're related. You know what I'm saying? Like you have two people in a family, they look like they're, they belong in the same family. Same thing. This is your family. You want to belong with this family, okay? Okay, so... Okay, step three is you're going to start brainstorming. So this is all the pre-work that we've done. Now we're going to start the brainstorming process. Okay. Um... So now you know the parameters of your genre, you can start breaking the rules, right? So what are the rules of the genre? What are the conventions of the genre? What does the genre do? How are you going to do it different? Because yes, you want to be a sister to these books, but you want to stand out as well. So what, how are you going to tweak things? How are you going to change things? How are you going to be different, but in a way that catches eyes instead of turning people away, right? Um, so there's basically four types of covers. You can intermix these. Not every cover is strictly in one of these four categories, but they, am I going too fast? I tend to talk really fast. Are you guys okay? Yes. No, but do you make your slides available? I can send you the notes. I don't send the slides, but I can send you the notes from the slides. That'd be perfect, because uh, you are going pretty fast. <laughs> I am going fast. Okay, so let me back up. Here is my newsletter sign up. If you want to sign up for my newsletter, um, fill this out. I will send you my notes if you want them. You also get um, four books for free. So you can try out my stuff and see if you like it. Also, I'm selling at the bookstore tonight. Please come take my books because I don't want to haul them home. <laughs> also, they're amazing. So there's that. Do you guys need a pen? Okay, let me see. This is my purple pen. I have a thing with purple pens. It's also my purple pen. <laughs> That's right. I'm scary. I know come That's a lie. <laughs> so, there's four types. I'll try to slow down. It's relaxing, okay? I'm going to use some of my yoga breathing. Okay, so the four types of covers that can be intermixed. One is conceptual. This is just an overview. We're going to get deeper into these, okay? Text-focused, character-focused, and scene-focused. Different genres like different ones of these, okay? So let's go into them a little bit and I have examples. Okay. Concept-based covers use a symbol. You've seen these, right? So um, this is Horde. I'm sorry it is blurry, so it's hard to see. But 
This is a grave. There, um, there is an eye socket right here of a skull, right? Um, so it's a shallow grave, okay? And you have all of these elements, right, that speak to horror, skulls, horror, right? That's very much, I mean, that's, like I told you guys, images have resonance, right? The skull says horror. Um, and then you have cinder, right? With the big shiny red shoe, which is kind of a twist on the Cinderella glass slipper, right? But it's still the shoe and it says cinder. So this is a concept based. Um, okay, so, but the twist is, can you guys see the, the bone isn't a bone, it's a bionicle, like, right? So there's the twist. You see how she took, this, the cover designer took the genre, the conventions of the genre, and then they used a little irony to twist it, which is what the bionicle like. Because Cinder is very princess, it's very, you know, castles and fairies and whatnot. Well, now we're throwing in bionicle, right? So this gets the reader thinking. This is like, it's a little bit of a twist, it's irony. So anytime you can use irony on your cover, it, it, I mean, this meets all of the genre conventions, but it has a little bit of a twist that makes it different, right? It makes it unique. You want a unique twist on it. Okay. Um, so a lot of fantasy novels do this. Uh, this one is mine. This is Witch Rising. Um, and it has a magical amulet slash pendant, right? Fantasy does this a lot. Swords, um, axes, crowns. They take a, some kind of a symbol thing and they build the cover around it. It's done a lot. Um, now these covers are pretty good because they appeal to both sexes. Um, because there's definitely an element that you can add to covers to make them more feminine, right? Or more masculine. And there's a very big difference as who your audience is and who you're trying to sell to. Some people go straight down the middle, they want to appeal to both sexes. I mean, if you're writing a paranormal romance, I don't think there's any point in trying to hide that by looking super masculine. That's just going to have your readers going, this isn't what I signed up for, right? So go ahead and make it feminine because those are your readers, right? Or at least that's who buys those books are people who aren't afraid to buy a feminine romance book, right? Not that it's just men or women. But, okay, so, so let's talk a little bit about what does the text say about the novel and the lines and the shapes. So what do you guys think about the text? The shape of the letters, right? Horror is a little bit hard to see, but it's kind of on this metal, gritty, dirty, um, kind of like one of those manhole covers. This is what it looks like, right? The people in this book live underground. So that's a hint of what you're getting, right? They live in the sewer systems in an apocalyptic world, post-apocalyptic world. So, and there's some blood. I wish you could see this better. There's a little bit of blood right here. So they've got all these little hints about what the book is about on the cover. And the more you look at it, it's kind of like Easter eggs, right? The more you look at it, the more you start seeing them. Um, so when we have Cinder, this is a very, they're all capital letters, very powerful, right? The middle letter is bigger than the outside letters, and it's kind of got this concave shape to it. Um, very different than Cinder, right? Are you noticing, can you guys all see that? If you need to like move, you can. So Cinder has a lot of curls. It has a lot of delicate points to it. It has circles, it has a lot of circles to it. So which one do you guys think appeals to which audience? Any thoughts? <laughs> yes. Um, I just want to say that the Cinder one as well is looking very like delicate and stuff. Mm. Some of the curls in there kind of evoke a musical feel as well. Oh yeah, so kind of like musical scene. notes right yeah. here. Right, right there it looks a lot yeah. like a bass book. That's um, true. Yeah. Anyway, if I would have to just guess based on stereotypes, you're probably going to hit a more masculine audience looking at the, uh, the Horde book. And right. Probably a lot more women reading Cinder. Right. This one has a lot of romantic elements in it. This is a very strong romantic plot, right? Um, I do believe that it is urban fantasy, but it's also could probably be paranormal pretty close right down the line, right? Um, if you take the romance out of it, you don't have much of a story with this one. This one, if you take the romance out of it, you still have a story. So yes, this one is it's far, it's much grittier, it's much darker, it's much more violent. Than this one. Can you see that in the covers? It's reflected in the covers. There's blood here. 
right? There's a skull here. There's um, a, what do they call the manhole cover here. So these are all giving you hints about what's inside the book. Now, if you as a reader pick up this book and it's this light, fluffy, cutesy story, you're gonna be annoyed because that's not what you wanted. It's not what you thought you were buying, okay? A lot of times authors get bad reviews it's because of their cover. It's because their cover says to the audience and the readers, this is what you're getting, and then the reader gets into the book and that's not what they got, okay? So they're annoyed. So you don't wanna annoy your readers. So make sure that what you're promising, the promises you're giving on the cover need to be fulfilled in the book, right? Okay, so what does the colors and tones tell you about it? You already answered. Thank you for answering. <laughs> yes. Well, in Cinder, it looks more mysterious in a way with the black background and the spotlight only on the person's leg. I don't know. Just very crisp. Yes, it's very crisp, but it's still mysterious. Like, yes, you see the like the metal inside her leg and all these different things. And then, mm -hmm. like, um, the or other it's book. messier. Yeah, the other book, it's much darker. Like, yes, Cinder is still like black background and stuff. It's like, right. more mysterious. But the other book, it's dark everywhere, and yes, it has a skull and just these little pin pinpoints to where you're like, okay, that could be more of a horror story. Okay, good. So, so just the tone of color can change. It changes um, a story. children's book to a horror story. And Paranormal often uses black and red. Think of Twilight, right? It's kind of a genre convention, yeah. I also feel like Cinder has this blue into it, so they're more of a calming sort of this, it, it has this awesome like stakes and stuff in the book to me. It looks like there's an awesome uh, twist in there, but it's also soothing like there's going to be something that it, it's an easier read than something like horror where it's messy and there's a lot of crisscrossing on the cover. There's this very, very sh sharp and there's a lot of angles and stuff. Right. This is one of my favorite covers of all time. And part of it is because it uses the paranormal colors, but it has a very fairy tale font. This is actually, you know, the. This, this letter C, it actually had the, the three lines. Have you seen them in the really gothic fairy tale fonts where they're so over stylized it's hard to even read them? They actually took the C and they removed a whole bunch of stuff from it. So it was easy to read. Never ever sacrifice readability for style. Just don't do it. That's got to be one of the laws, right? And so they removed that so that it was readable, but it still says fairy tale, also paranormal. So all of the messages the readers are getting are spot on. They nailed it with this cover. This cover also says the message is just not as powerful to me. It's not as crisp. It doesn't appeal to me as much. Did you have something? Oh, I was just going to comment on the, the color schemes that they use. Where four is very browns, blacks, reds, sort of alluding to you know death and horror and all of those sorts of things. Where the cinder is crisp, clear colors that are, it's a, a lot more delineated and a lot more sophisticated than something Right, okay. Yeah. So, oh, sorry. Yes. There's, the center just strikes me as, um, although there's darkness going around, in, around, around her world, that there's hope, that the brightness is hope and that she will be a bright light to, for herself and for people. I mean, that's just how it stands out. And you've got that all with a leg, a yeah. shoe, <laughs> and some words, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, powerful, powerful stuff. Sometimes the more simple a cover it is, the, the harder it is to pull that cover off. I've done really simplistic covers. I have one, um, a concept for one, and it's really, really, really hard to actually pull off the really simple ones because you have to see, you have to just keep taking away the layers until you're just down to the core of it. What is the core of the story and how do we represent that visually in the most simplistic way, right? Okay, let's talk about my cover a little bit. What do you guys think that the story is about based on the cover? Magic, why do you think there's magic? There's a lot of green wavy lines. Yes, so there is, it's hard to see because it's blurry. There's little twirly, circly, magic -y lines. We did that on purpose because I wanted the magic to be represented in the cover because the magic is a huge part of the story. Okay, what else can you see? Yes. It's probably, I mean, if you're going with traditional stereotypes, it's probably about a girl because usually it's the women who wear necklaces and so it would be a different kind of artifact for these guys. As a more masculine. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And it is about a girl. Yes. Did you have something? I was just saying it's, it's like a magical amulet. It's a it's a symbol. Of, uh, it's right. a magical item. 
Yes. Um, I like that it's green and gold mm -hmm. um, because to me, those colors together kind of are evocative of like Scotland and like that kind of beautiful green and gold velvety dresses and red hair. Like it kind of evokes that ethereal almost feeling. Right. We chose, I, I chose those colors on purpose because I wanted very warm, natural colors because the, the, the magic in this world is the witches sing to control nature, right? So that's how the magic works. Um, so I wanted very um, warm, very earth tones in my covers. Um, can you guys see what's to the left and right? They're dragons, they're dragon statues. It's how, you can easily see that if it looks over. Can you guys see it? I can see outlines. Right here. I can see outlines. Right here. Outline. here. Yeah. They're the snaky, serpenty Chinese dragons, right? That's good. And behind it is very Chinese architecture building. This is also underwater. So this building is sunken. Right? As our, yes. And that's what I was going to say, is it makes me feel like she's like drowning into it. She's got this trouble, she's drowning. There's this darkness underneath and around her, but you see the like rays of light coming down. And so it just, it, it just tells a story. We got it. Right? Go and um, goes forward. the fact that it's underwater is pretty intriguing, right? Okay, so all of those things tell you a story about the story, right? All very important for how we, um, how we think and how we associate images with, and even colors, like she was mentioning with colors. Certain colors, we associate with things, right? You need to be aware of color choice when you're doing this. And what are the main color choices of your genre, okay? So let's talk about these covers. So these, this is another cover type, right? This is character-focused covers. You see these a ton, right? It's very common. People's eyes are drawn to faces. It's just what we're built to do. Have you ever like looked at the, the, the random patterns in a piece of tile and seen a face in it? You know, people are drawn to see faces, so they're very effective covers. Um, it revolves around the character, and it's um, a great treatment. You have an interesting main character. You have a really interesting main character, okay? So if you're gonna do these, you better have written a really good main character, right? Because that's kind of that's one of the things you're promising your readers. Um, the rule of threes is that there are only three focal points on a good cover. If you have any more than that, it gets cluttery. I've seen this a lot. I was tempted to put bad examples of covers on here, but I don't want to hurt people's feelings. So I'm just going to do the good ones. And I, you guys have seen the bad covers, right? You know what they look like. They're messy. They'll have, and they're usually, you'll take an image and just kind of like, it's almost like cutting it out and you're, like when you were a kid and you cut the images out of the magazines and then glue them. Don't do that. Ever. <laughs> so, okay. I am really good at designing covers, but I don't, I'm not an artist, right? So I find people that are good artists and then I tell them what I want. Okay. So the rule of threes. Now let's talk about the three. Okay. So what's the three on Lux? What's the three things? Yes. Uh, the girl in the back, the guy in the front, and the text. Exactly. One, two, three. Now, what do you notice about one, two, three? It is, yes, we're getting into that later. And it's not on this page, so shh. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Nobody sees the one, two, three. Size. Oh. It, yes. Okay, so. The, the girl in the back, though, mm -hmm. size-wise, obviously, the guy's super big. Right. She's little, and the text is big. You can read it from this distance. Right. But the girl in the back is very mysterious. Right. And so she kind of draws me even personally in more than the very large gentleman in the front. Because I'm like, seriously, mysterious. What, if, when you look at this cover, what is the first thing that you see? What is the first thing your eye snags on? The guy's eye. The guy? Are we all, who, who snags on the guy? That oh, is sorry, three sorry. people. Sorry. Four. <laughs> really? Okay, what, what about the text? Lux. No, the last, thing last thing you see? So we got a few that saw Lux. What about the girl? So a lot of you saw the girl. Okay, that's awesome. Good to know. Okay, so, but the rules of threes, right? So, biggest to smallest. They can't all be the same size. You can't have three people. Well, you can. You can do the three people, but you don't see it very often. Have you ever seen the, the movie posters and whatnot where they have a team of people? The person in the front is the biggest, 
and then they get smaller and they step back from each other, right? So it's the same thing with this. This is the most detailed. He's very detailed. You can see his iris. You can see the individual hairs. He's very detailed, right? She's very not detailed. She's very blurry. She's very small. She doesn't have a lot of details. There's not colors. There's, there's a, a, basically a shape. That's about all she has. And then you have the text, which is super, super simple. There's not a lot of flowery serifs on it and whatnot. It's very simple, right? Now, let's go to poison. What is the first thing that your eye lands on with poison? Girl. girl. Who's the girl? The side girl? The girl. This girl. Is that the first thing you're lying in? Most yeah. people, their eyes land on her. Okay, what about the text? Two? Okay, what about some of the details, like with the branches and the trees and the setting? A couple of those. So most people see the girl. Do you think they did this on purpose? Absolutely. Let's talk about shapes and covers. And the cheater girl. Okay, so they often will do shapes to highlight what they want you to see. It's called leading the eye, okay? Now, this is all very dark. This is white, right? And it gradually gets wider closer to her face because we're highlighting her face. I love this cover. If you guys have not seen this cover in all of its glory, you need to pull it up and look at it. It's amazing. I wish you could see it. But it is total, I love Easter egg covers where they have all these cute little details hidden. And the more you look at it, the more you find these details. She's holding, can you see what she's holding? It's a potion ball. And it's a very vibrant blue. Right? The title is Boy. We can all read it. Poison! Good job! We need the author! Okay, so the title's Poison. She's holding this. This little pink thing is a pig. It's so cute. She has a pink pig. It's adorable. And after I read, I, mean, I, I first saw this and first read it, I'm like, she has a pet pig. That is so lame. And afterwards, I was like, honey, can we get a pet pig? I want one. And he was like, what are you reading? <laughs> and it has these cute little mushrooms, right? It's all very Alice in Wonderland looking, okay? Now, does it kind of, it's kind of fun, right? This is a fun cover. This is lots of fun things going on. It's got fun colors. It's got kind of stylized mushrooms and cute little pigs. And is this one cute? No, no, it's not cute, right? This is not a cute book. This is a, this is a paranormal romance. And it's some sexiness, right? Okay, this one is super cute. It's very intense, but it's super cute. It's totally okay for middle grade. Okay, this does this say middle grade to you? Oh, no. Really? Oh, no. Does this one say middle grade? Yeah, but I love it, and I'm 36. So definitely. Okay. And okay, so now we have this is my witch born. What do you see? The very first thing you see when you look at witch born? Face. Her face. This was done on purpose, right? The illustrator that I have had is amazing with faces. She does great characters, so we wanted to take advantage of this, right? Now, did you notice in, okay, this book is a pendant, right? The pendant's on all these covers. It's the, the unifying, a lot of series covers will have one unifying theme besides obviously the text and the font, right? They'll tell you that these covers belong together. They also have the same warm colors, right? Very earth tone colors. Okay, what's the second thing that you see when you see which one? Her hand. The what? Her hand. Her hand, yes. Text. Text. So, um, what do you guys think that the fonts say about the moods of these? Well, we already kind of, what do you think about the mood of this one? Yes. Question, uh, what's the weird like black thing on her hand from here? It it's looks a like a spat. Okay. There's moths, moth, 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 they're all moths. And they're okay. circling around her. And once again, shapes, it's, this is actually in a spiral. So the bigger ones and the key getting smaller the closer they get to her face. Okay. Um, I wish you could see all the details of these covers because they're all amazing covers. Okay. So colors, so we talked about, so what is the, what does the font do you think say about which one? Yes. Uh, the font is a little bit, like the end looks a little bit runic, and gen in general it just kind of evokes like an older time period. Right. And so that kind of tells you a bit about the setting that maybe it's not high technology. Or right. Anywhere near technology. So you're exactly right. Yep. And that's what we were going for. I didn't want a super typeface looking font, right? Like looks. 
like Lux. This is a modern day. This is this is high fantasy, and that's high fantasy. So yes. Okay. So what about? Can we talk about colors and tones? I'm getting to like look sure. a little bit. What are the colors and tones? I am such a good teacher. You guys like totally know what I'm talking about. Okay. What do the colors and the tones tell you about these books? You can't really see this right here very clearly. You can see it very clearly when it's not a mess because of the stupid projector. <laughs> but it's very spaceship-y when you okay. okay. If this is a spaceship, it's the lights. Yeah. It is a UFO. He's a UFO. It's hot sex. It's UFO. <laughs> I really like this book. Okay. So what do you guys think about the what is it? The moods of these books. Shapes. Okay, look at all these curly cues. Like even in the cute little curly cues. Does that tell you something about the mood and the tone? And how dark it is, right? That picture makes an eye. Which one? Poison. Uh, I see. The shape of all the trees and the trees around here, and she's yep. a bunch of people. Yep. Right. Oh, I've never thought of that. See? <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So, um, is he wearing a shirt? No. no. <laughs> that tells you there's some sexiness going on, right? <laughs> if there's ever a guy without a shirt on a cover, there's some sexiness going on. If you didn't know, now you do. <laughs> Okay, so there's a, what so we already talked about through the keys and lines and we talked about sexual you don't have to worry about sexual content with this book. No. no, you're really not. It's a really clean cute book. What about mine? What do you think? Is there some sexiness going on? Maybe. There's some kissing. That's about all you get. You left yourself open, but it's not saying She's not saying come hither. Yeah. No. She does not have the come hither yet. <laughs> It saves me. It looks magical. It does look magical. Like me. I'm not evil. So, this is setting and scene focused covers. Okay, so these are great for books with really exciting settings. Or, a lot of um, mystery novels have setting covers, right? It's kind of a staple of the genre. Okay, so. They're kind of, they don't have a super strong focus, right? So what's the first thing you see? Oh, gosh, I wish these weren't so messy. What's the first thing you see when you see this one? Yes. Uh, the guy with like whatever in the blue, like light blue spot. Not the biggest guy in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I think he's riding, let me see. He's riding like a lightning bolt or something. It's really yeah. cool. I think yes. he's jumping. It's a hoverboard. So let's talk. Yeah, let's yeah, talk about that. color. The lighter things are what's going to dry your eye first, right? You're drawn to something surrounded by a halo of white, high contrast. This is very high contrast, right? So this draws your eye. They did this on purpose. Did you think this? This is not an accident, right? We can all understand why this. Okay. Well, then let's look also at the the shape of it. This is like a spiral, like a tornado. Bigger, 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 smaller, smaller, right? And you see how they, they have a circular motion to it? It's a spiral, right? Where it's bigger on the outside, smaller, and it goes up. So this is one of the ways that you have a busy, busy cover without it looking cluttered. Look at the shapes of it, okay? There's the, the, the objects in the cover will make a shape and it will look much less cluttered. Now, each object needs to be less defined and less colorful, right? And the thing that you want to stand out the most is going to have the highest contrast and the most detail. Capiche? Okay. So what's the first thing that drives your eye with this cover? Yes. The text at the top. The text at the top. Death at the matter. This is very, what does this font evoke? Art Deco, which is 19, what, 20s? Yeah, totally Art Deco, right? This is also very Art Deco. Um, and then very high contrast down here. The building is kind of messy. We've got this light thing going on here. It's a little bit cluttered. It doesn't have really a strong focal point, but that's the genre. This is the conventions of the genre. This is exactly what it's supposed to look like. Not my favorite thing, but this isn't my genre, right? I always think of like stodgy old people. <laughs> I'm lying. It was a joke. <laughs> I don't really think that. Okay. <laughs> so, this is middle grade, this is your mystery, mine is high fantasy. 
uh, young adult, right? Okay, so what's the first thing you see when you see my cover, which is amazing, I wish you could see it. A castle. A castle. A castle. It's made of ice. <laughs> it's not a little girl castle. Let it go. Let it go, castle. I started this series before that came out. I will have it known. My book was published before I ever watched Frozen. They stole it from me. Okay, I'm suing Disney later. It's true. <laughs> I knew so many people were going to be like, I don't think I stole this from Frozen. My throat. Okay. Not even drops, like fucking it. Do what? You said it's all straight, so we're good. Yes. Let's go forth and spread the word. Okay, so um, what's the second thing you see with my cover, Daughter of Hunter? Yes. Uh, I personally move from top to bottom because okay. everything is very orderly, and the lines of the castle make it easier to surf, to go from top to bottom. Right. So these are um, deer, and they are made out of ice, and they're yeah. very they have planes, very much they've got all planes on them. So she does sculptures of ice, and she makes things out of ice. So she makes this castle, and there's little fairies. Elsa. Right. Okay. Is this a sexy look? <laughs> Oh, they're, they're not even kissing in this one. There's like a like I think you're cute. Oh, there's no like kissing in this one. Yeah, this one's really clean. So um, so this is the so this is the spiral we reverse spiral. We went over that. The images on the inside are smaller. It's a direction line of focus. Okay, so direct spiral. Got it. Any questions? Because I'm a great teacher. You don't even have questions. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so if you can, if you can't do a spiral, you can make other shapes, triangles, rectangles, like that. Okay, so this is winter queen. This is mine. So we definitely have some zigzags going on, right? Yeah. This is yes. yes. <laughs> You're super interactive. Are you just tired? Are you gonna all day or something? Oh my God. I'll start spitting on the people in the front row. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> you have. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, like you'll be awake. Yes. Was I thought it was you. Because yes. I did, but I didn't know if someone else was raising it. I can't see all the detail. So from this distance, that first one looks more like an X to me. Like, I because the that. We, is that a wings or something in the background? There are wings. Yeah, there's like definitely that. some wings going on. And, <laughs> I mean, I know X's are kind of a popular shape too, so I just thought I'd point it. It looks very X. Is that a word? <laughs> it is now. It is. I tell people all the time, I have a creative license. I have, I have invented the word, um, now I can't remember it. What is it? Slickery. Slickery. You all know what this means, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. you do. It's going to be in my vampire book. <laughs> Slickery. She invents words. It's perfect. And people are always calling her out. She's like, whatever, shut up. <laughs> okay. So... Let's let in the, the shape. So you guys can see this one better. I forgot that it was bigger. Can you see the circle? Yeah. Very yeah. strong circle, right? So. And the light is the highest contrast on the thing you want people to see first, right? This this would be lost if it was not a bright color, because it's messy behind it, right? You've got a lot going on behind it. Um, and I love that they pulled the color from here. That's another really fun thing to do with your covers, right? If you've got a cover and you need it to have a certain color, you can pull from some object in here. I would like, what, and there's a reason they went with blue instead of pink. You don't want it to be that girly, right? Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with pink. But anyway, and then you can see a little bit of the cute mushrooms a little bit more. Okay, so what about the shape of Island of Silence? This book had kind of an ink cover, and it was selling well enough they went and gave it a better, better cover. So this is the better cover. Yeah, it's a, it's a spiral going this way. You could also call it a zigzag, but it's more of a spiral because it gets smaller. I couldn't handle it. Right? So they, they took, it's got a lot of elements in it, and they created a shape with the element so that your eye wouldn't be overwhelmed. Right? You understand this concept? I've, I've driven it home. We all get it. Okay. Moving onward. Okay, so these are text-based covers. These are covers where the first thing you see is the text. Right? Um, yes, first thing you see is text? Yeah. I should point with this hand. This, yes. Okay, first thing you see is text? No. Some of you see the, the fairy first? No, I can't see the text. You can't at see all. the text? Because the thing's in the way. <laughs> text first. And then Jody Picoult. I mean, she, she only has two little lines, and the only thing other than that is the text, right? But she's Jody Picoult, she can do whatever she wants. Okay, so. Um, 
But the, the biggest um, real estate eater-upper, <laughs> yeah, I'm an author, I use big word, <laughs> is the text, right? This is a staple of the mystery, um, murder, whodunit stuff, right? Along with a building, usually. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the genre, they don't really appeal to me, I'm like, it looks scary. Okay, so, of ice and snow, um, once again, text, but there's a trick for you, right? Um, this is my back cover of Winter Queen with the fairy on it. I saved myself a lot of money just using the back cover and putting the text on it, all right? So, um, be flexible, right? Especially when um, you're in India. So, I'm te technically a hybrid, but anyway. Okay, so which one do you think appeals to female readers? Which one's the you want the fairy one, huh? Yes. I knew it! <laughs> Obviously, I wrote it. You all, just let's get it out of the way. The fairy one is the one you want, right? Okay, moving on. Second favorite, which one appeals to males versus females? You guys are so sweet. Females. What's Male, female. Male? Yeah. Why is it male? Yeah. What are the elements they use to say man book? Strong, strong letters, big letters. Joe. <laughs> if, it was, if it was for a girl movie, the, or a girl book, it would have been Jonathan. I mean, let's be honest, right? Joe. Joe. I don't want to write about Joe. The whole thing kind of brings pretty brutal as well. Brutal. Why are you getting that? What says brutal? There's a lot Dissect of it. There's a lot of markings all over the letters. Um, Pretty. Like, yeah, like they've had sheriff from them or they've been drugs across something. Mm -hmm. I like it, yes. What about the colors? It's dark. I mean, it's dark? <laughs> What's the other main color? Darkness and red. 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 What does red say? Blood. 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 In this context, it says blood, right? If it is cinder with the red shoe, it's more of a love thing, right? So red can mean passion. It can also mean um, somebody's dying. What about the house? It's kind of out of focus, you can just only see oh, the, the light from the house. Well, no, you, can, you can see the, the house from the light. They kind of have this like bloom effect coming off of the window. You guys can scoot up if it's hard for you to see this stuff. <laughs> yeah, because it's super blurry. Okay, so, um, Sans, Serif, and Serif. Who knows what those are? Somebody raise your hand. Yes, you. <laughs> Not you! You! <laughs> Seraph has the little, like, feet at the end of the sure. letters, whereas yeah. sans Seraph tend to end on sans a Sans means without. Yeah. So Seraph has the extra little, like, marking. See how it goes past the letter a little bit? So that's Seraph. Sans Seraph. Sans Seraph is usually masculine. Seraph, usually feminine. Yeah. You didn't know that, now you do. Look! Next time you're looking through books, see if you can notice, okay? Look at uh, Jody Picoult books. Is it sans serif or serif? Yes. Yep. Now look at the curly cue. That's a feminine shape. In our culture, curly cues are a feminine thing, right? Yep. They're not, in, and for all the vibes out there that are feeling mad and sad and unhappy that they're feminized, I want to apologize to them for our silly American culture. <laughs> Yes, okay, we cover everything on there. Oh, okay. More decorative things are, right? That is usually also more of a feminine thing. Okay. So, do you guys want to pass these around and look at them? Because I feel like you can't see them up close. So this is a bison snow. If you want to pass them around. I'm not saying you have to, but you really should. Okay. And this one is the one with the fairy, so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so thinking about the overall shapes and lines, usually a masculine book is going to have harsh, jagged, um, 90 degree angle lines, right? A female, a more female book, and it's not just the text, right? We, we went over all of these covers, okay? Lots more curving lines for the female book. The Island of Silence, it has, it's a lot more, it's, they're trying to go for both the girls and the boys on that cover. Can you see that? And the way that they, the, the colors that they chose, and the, 
little, like the, the shapes that they've used, they're kind of just going right to the middle, right? Um, okay, so it also gives you an idea of the energy. So if you go back to that one with the, the house in the back that was red, and if you go back to Horde with the manhole cover and the blood, right? They had a lot of chaos, a lot of harsh angles, right? Um, let's go back to, stop means I go to, okay, so a lot of X's, lots of X's, a lot of harsh angles in those. That gives you an idea of the tone and also of who you're going for readership-wise. Okay, so it gives you a sense of the energy of the book, right? If it's more of a phrenic energy or if it's more of a chill, relaxed, kind of energy. Okay, so um, I have, so Huntress is my vampire novel, and you can distort things. Okay, so dark and chaotic versus light and fun, right? We went over a dark and chaotic versus light and fun. Um, relentless versus spiraling, right? I mean, you can all, I can tell you, which one of these is a more relentless book? Right? Yeah. This one. I mean, you get all that from the cover, you don't even have to crack it, right? And all of these things are built into us. Five minutes. Thank you much. Okay, so high contrast colors and shapes. Um, the title needs to be readable in thumbnail. Super important. You need to get, y'all know what thumbnail is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. Getting a little blank notes. Which one, so when you're looking, when you're scrolling through Amazon and the cover's this big, you need to be able to read it when it's, it's the size of your thumbnail. Um, okay, so fonts and texture don't go together. Don't have a funky texture on your font. And this is, once again, we all know the rules can be broken, right? Yes, you can break this rule, but it makes this font harder to read because it's messier. So this was a mistake I made with my first book. We had a beveled edge on it, and it just made it darker and harder to read. Okay, so... Um, Go clean and simple over busy and cluttered. You are much better off to just have, honestly, the title and your name than to have a bad cover. At least it's simple. At least it's not a bad cover. Because you can't go worse than that. Okay, finding a cover artist. We're gonna go faster. Um, we already talked about Pinterest, DeviantArt. App, you can ask another, other authors. So if you have other authors in your genre who you're buddies with, who's your cover artist? Do you love them? Do you love what they do? Are they easy to work with? Ask around, right? Um, and then I usually get a handful of artists and I start emailing them. I've spent hundreds of hours on DeviantArt looking for emerging artists, people who are good, but they're not expensive because they haven't made it out yet. They're willing to work for the exposure, right? A lot, most of them are not American because Americans want a lot more money. So for me to afford my covers, I spent hours on DeviantArt and I emailed a whole bunch of artists and I got bids. One lady was gonna do, so my, my witch song cover, or my Witcher Queen cover y'all are looking at, she was gonna, like 250 bucks is what she was gonna charge me for that. I was like, I'm gonna pay you more than that because I'm not a jerk. <laughs> but yeah, so you can get amazing cover art and you don't have to spend a bajillion dollars, but you are gonna have to spend time, right? Okay. Oh, super specific. I will send them a model in the positions that I want. I send them a model of what the face looks like. I send them a model of what the clothing looks like. I want the background. I will describe it. You Sometimes there's a few little things that I'm like, I'm not sure what to do here. Do you have ideas? But I, the more specific you are, the more happier you're going to be because you're going to get what you want. Right? So I'm super specific about everything on my covers, from the colors all the way down to the shapes. Okay? Um... Okay, so you have to have a contract. I know if when you're first starting out and you think I don't need a contract, we're friends, 10, 15 years down the road, nobody's going to remember what you guys both agreed to. And if they're a super famous, my artist now charges like $8,000 for a cover. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, if I don't have a contract and she says, we only had a 10 year, I want my, I want my rights back. I have a contract that says I now own the rights to this art, right? You have to have a contract. Um, if you try to get it so that you can own the copyright. If they won't give you the copyright, try and get an unlimited use, 
right? So then they can still use it, but you can use it for whatever you want. That means you can do bookmarks. You could do, like, I used my cover for um, Winter Queen. Winter Queen, I used that cover for the bat, for the cover of, of Ice and Snow, right? I can do that because I own it. If I didn't own it, I'd have to get more rights to do that. Okay. If there's something bugging you about it, you've got to be proactive and not be submissive about it. Okay. Um, the artwork isn't done until it's printed. That's another big thing. Computers have lights and screens. So anything on the computer is going to be brighter. When you print, when you print any book, it's going to look way darker. Um, my graphic designer for the ebooks, they're fine. She goes through and changes all of my art for my print books, right? Because if not, they're very dark and they're very shadowed and you lose a lot of the detail. Okay, um, payments are usually installment. Don't send the final payment until you have the files. Okay, another thing is deliverables. You want the final wraparound with text, without text, I mean. So, this is a final wraparound. This is my Summer Queen cover, okay? Um, so this is what the entire cover looks like, like this, right? Um, let's go back. Okay, so you need, um, that way, you don't want her to do the text for you and send them the file with the text already on it, because what if you want to change the text someday? What if you want to change your um, blurbs? What if you want to change your cover copy? All those things, you can't, yes? Do you have a different person do your text than does your art? Yes, usually, if you have people that do cover design for a living, they can usually do both. The girls that I use, they're trained as illustrators, they're not trained. It's like trying to write fiction and nonfiction two different disciplines, right? So the first time I ever did it, I had her do my text, right? She put the beveled edge on it and the colors on it, and it was darker and it didn't look good, and this this one is a little bit too crowded. If I had to do it over again, I would, I would zoom it out so that she was smaller and you had more room for text that it wasn't cutting over top of her head and whatnot, right? So yeah, I do, I pay someone to do all of that and make it super readable and super clean because Mike said I've had two illustrators that are amazing illustrators, and neither one of them could do a really great job on the text. So I have, um, I have a graphic artist. Okay, so you want the highest resolution. Okay, so you want a JPEG and a compressed file for printing and online use. So you need a compressed file so that you can upload with smaller, right, smaller file. You also want a high resolution t TIF file, a TIFF file. So that if you want, you can change things later. I've changed, I've made it lighter. Um, I, you, can, you can tweak things a little bit if you have it. And if not, you have, it's a lot harder to do. So you want that, you want the layers. So the layers, I'm not a person that knows these things, but all of those fairies on that of ice and snow cover, I have an image of just that fairy. That's it, and I can put them on bookmarks, I can put them, I can move them, because I have, so the layers that I have, I have the girl, this is Nile. I have an app file with just her. I have a file with just the background, and I have a file with five fairies for this cover. And I can move them around. I, so what I did was my, my, gra my, cover my graphic designer moved things. She said, you know what, your girl is too big. We're gonna shrink her a little bit. She shrank her on the cover, she added the fairies in different places, in different sizes, right? So that it was more readable. Um, another thing is the pendant. In this book, I have a file of just the pendant, so I can use it for all kinds of stuff, right? Okay, so, and once again, the common symbol or object for a series. Sometimes that's just your text. You always use the same um, font for all, across the series. I like, all of my books have the same branding, where it's, I have the same font for my name, and then for the witch song, um, so they all have my name on the top and the title on the bottom and the image in the middle. That's my branding, okay? Um, okay, so yeah, that's my class.